It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. So my friends, you're struggling with your weight. You know, you, t- you go on a diet, you lose a couple of pounds, then all of a sudden you gain a couple of pounds, then you lose a couple of pounds, and you're starting to get you know, heavier and heavier. What do you do? Well, we have a very interesting show for you today. It's about weight loss surgery. I know some of you don't like to hear that word surgery, but we're going to go through it today and hopefully educate you with a fantastic team from Lehigh Valley uh, Hazelton Health uh, Network. And we have uh, no stranger to the show, Dr. Jonathan Perry is back with us, uh, who is the surgeon, and Brenda Durr, who is a program coordinator, and Molly Sweden, uh, Sweetie, who is the program nutritionist slash dietitian. Now, um, first of all, uh, I said sometimes we go on diets. You know, we gain weight and we want to lose a couple of pounds and we we hear this diet, wow, and we guarantee you lose 30 pounds in a month or whatever and then you go on it and then all of a sudden a couple of months later you, you're back up to not only the pounds that you lost but then more. So the, the question is, before we get into the details as to how this program works, and it's a program that's been really around for a while and we have some seasoned people here today. How do I know when is it time for me to Let's call that 888 number and get some information. You're not obligated. How do I know that? Uh, that's a very good question because, I mean, I think that's a, a question that everybody has to answer for themselves. Uh, if you've been struggling weight for, with your weight for a long time and, uh, and it's just it's, it's impacting your life, you can't do things with the kids, um, you're just discovering you have new medical problems that... Um, you know, now you have to take medications for blood pressure, diabetes, and that kind of thing, uh, then it may be the appropriate time to consider, you know, an, a more, you know, I, I call surgery a more durable weight loss solution. Uh, and, and there are some qualifications to it, but um, again, if, you were, if you've been struggling for a long time and medical issues have cropped up, then you, a lot of those individuals in that scenario often qualify for weight loss surgery. So I see a scenario here, okay? I, sometimes, you know, you know, you have young people, you know, 18, 20, 22 years old, 23, and, you know, some of them are young mothers and some of them have challenges in their life. And, uh, you know, it's not that they want to gain weight by no means, but what happens is the challenge is they're not eating properly and all of a sudden they're gaining more weight, okay? So being younger, I guess, the health factors you get away with it, correct me if I'm wrong, and get away with some of those health factors, you know, when you're younger. But now we hit the 50s and 60s where people are beginning to balloon up, okay? And I think there's where I would assume you're seeing more of the health factors, uh, the blood pressure, high blood pressure. So it's really a health factor for, for every area, but concerns would be mostly people who are elderly, certainly people who are younger who are just gaining weight. Am I correct in saying that? That's correct. I mean, in fact, you make a good point that people, uh, as they age, uh, the body tends to gain a little bit extra weight, and then they find themselves, again, all these medical problems start to creep up on them, and they feel tired, they don't want to take all these pills, and, you know, they want to be there for their loved ones, especially, you know, their kids or their grandkids, and so they realize, you know, it's, it's tough. When you're early in in life, you, you do everything you can to, to get through the, the job, the work, and then you realize you need to start taking care of yourselves, and so definitely a group of people in the 50s, for example, 40, 50s, say, oh, I need to start taking care of myself so I can be there for others. You said, uh, doctor, that I, a person would know whether they should, you know, call and get some information. Uh, what, how much weight would you consider, okay? I mean, how overweight should you be? Now, I'm like about 8 to 10 pounds overweight, all right? But I'm still handsome, okay? I know that well. So the, the question is... Um, I just, if I want to lose some weight, I should, you know, restructure my diet, maybe do some, but let's, let's assume I was 50 pounds overweight or 60 pounds overweight. What is the, when is the determination as to, listen, you know, this is not good for me. I'm having trouble walking and even young people. I mean, I see young people here again, I'm not criticized, but you know, you don't know what their life's all about and they just bloom right up, which is sad. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what would be the determining factor here? Well, uh, to get a little technical, there's this number called BMI, or Body Mass Index, and it's a number, it's a little arbitrary, but it's based off of a calculation from our height and our weight. And uh, a normal person, theoretically, should have a BMI under 25. And 
uh, anything over starts to be overweight. So when we start creeping up to the, the numbers that in, in approach the area of 35 to 40, uh, at least for now, the way that medicine and research is, is, is our, our, our focus is offering surgery to those groups. There may even be sooner uh, looking at, like people, uh, insurance and, and research saying that, hey, people should get the, the surgery, potentially could benefit from the surgery if they get it at lower BMIs. But right now it's the number 35 to 40. And you can calculate this on online. Just Google, you know, BMI calculator. You can put your numbers in and you can find out where your BMI is. But. Okay. Now, Brenda, uh, you're the program director, okay, uh, coordinator, I'm sorry. Now, you've been around, you're a young girl, but you've been around a while, so you have mm -hmm. a great team. Mm -hmm. How long have you been with the... Uh, well, I've been with, I've been with the bariatric program, I'm going to say, at least 10 years at this mm -hmm. point. Um, I was assistant in the role for about two years and then full-time now the past eight years. Mm -hmm. so, um, uh, we're, we're getting busier since mm -hmm. we have Dr. Perry here now, mm -hmm. so... Um, we do information sessions. Uh, we're doing two a month, and uh, we've been getting um, many attendees, we'll say, at the information sessions. Okay, so now, once again, um, uh, Sammy, put the 888 number on. It's 1-888-402-5846, which is actually 402-LVHN. Um, so um, when, when they call mm -hmm. this number, okay, they, they know they're, they're overweight and they've tried everything, and I know, I know four people that have been through this and then finally went for procedures, okay? Uh, they tried everything they could, all right? Um, so I feel that I'm really concerned now because mm -hmm. it's really affected me. And, and I'm a young person, 20-some years or 30-some years or 50 mm -hmm. or 60, whatever. Does age have a factor? Does it make a doctor? Does it make any difference if you're 65 or 70 and you're really, you know, overweight? Uh, the age plays a little bit, uh, it's, it's sort of, um, some, it's associated with more medical problems. I've, uh, older people tend to have more medical problems. But uh, we are, our current focus in our program is to, to focus on low acuity patients. Uh, so we tend to, uh, we, we include everybody in the program from a counseling standpoint, but from a surgery standpoint, we try to send uh, people like 65 and older to a higher acuity center, i.e. Uh, Cedar Crest in Allentown. So that way, uh, as we build our program here, which is, we're still in a building phase, uh, you know, we, we make sure the program's running perfect, and then we take on the, the more challenging cases. Okay, now back to you, uh, uh, Brenda. Uh, when, all right, so, the, so I'm watching, and I know I'm overweight. I trade everything under the sun, exercise, you name it. I'm still fat, in my, my opinion. Um, I call, what, how does this work? Now, okay. Role play me this. Okay. Um, if a patient's interested in weight loss surgery, mm -hmm. uh, we have a central uh, number to call to register for a future. That's the 888 number. Mm -hmm. okay. We call them future information events. And what that it, event is, it is an evening. It's about two hours in length. Uh, Dr. Perry, our program surgeon, will do a lecture. Uh, he will talk about uh, obesity. Uh, he will show uh, videos of the procedures uh, that are offered here in Hazleton. And he also, uh, I will speak a little bit about the insurance companies, uh, guide the patients on what they need to do with the insurance process. Uh, because it is an elective surgery, uh, the patients do need some assistance with their insurance in that. So, and after that, after that evening, uh, we give the patients an appointment uh, before they leave if they're interested and they can come into the office and start the program. So, um, and we do have, uh, our program starts at age 18. Uh, we, we are not an adolescent center, so, you know, we start at age 18 and above an adult. And patients come into the surgery office uh, where they'll meet Dr. Perry for the first time. Uh, I should say second time. They'll meet Molly and they'll meet myself. Uh, we do an extensive uh, history and physical. We put all their health information in their medications, their allergies, and start them into the program. You know, I, I think it's, it's a very nervous, you know, a person's calling in their, their surgery and the unknown and do I really have to have this? And I think that's where it's important where the counseling comes in and you're able to let them see for themselves. Now, do you, all, do you um, have people who have been through this procedure before that, you know, come in and talk and because it's always good to say it. You know, I felt just mm -hmm. like you did, and mm -hmm. here's what happened to me. Do you have any of those references? If, if I could comment also, um, I do want to uh, back, uh, back up a moment. At the information event, when I do my 
slide presentation, I do like to, uh, I always like to reference the fact that most of the attendees that, that do register, they think about this uh, for a couple years before they place that call to that 1888 number. This isn't a decision that comes within a week, two weeks. And most of the patients, you know, they're all nodding their head or prospective patients, I should say, in the, at the information event. So they all agree with that piece. But in answering your question, a little uh, highlighting further, um, we do have family members. We just had an information event uh, the end of January, and we actually had uh, a patient that recently had surgery from our program here in Hazleton and had accompanied one of her family members who's interested in the surgery, and she's already enrolled in our program as well. So. Okay, now you said something, okay, that you're saying that, <laughs> you know, the two years, you know, uh, however, uh, there are people who may have not been thinking of the surgery who have been obese or, or fighting weight right now, what, maybe what, watching the show. And what happens is, even though I'm not thinking of it, now maybe when this show, it's an opportunity for them to at least discover something about it. It doesn't mean you're going to get the procedure, but discover something about it. Um, that's wh where I'm coming from. You know, if, if I know I've been on a diet for two years or three years and I've been having no success and I'm taking blood pressure pills, as, you know, everything's not going the way it should be, etc. I know I have to do something. So now is where we would encourage them to at least call, okay? Um, to get some s support. That's, that's what I'm hoping happens. Mm -hmm. All right, so Molly, as the program nutritionist dietitian, mm -hmm. where do you come into the picture here? So as we all know, obesity is a major factor in having the surgery performed. And like you had mentioned earlier, it was a lot of diets. And with the diets, they're only temporary, they don't last. So what I teach is how they can make lifestyle modifications to better prepare themselves for life after surgery. So from my very first meeting until they go to the OR for surgery, we meet often to discuss different habits. And I encourage them even before surgery to practice these habits. Holidays are very tough, so practice as if you had surgery to better prepare yourself for those lifestyle modifications after. Okay, so now I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, mm -hmm. look, uh, maybe Molly could put me in a, in a mm -hmm. dietary or a dietitian mm -hmm. and help me. Maybe I could lose weight by listening to Molly instead of going to Dr. Perry mm -hmm. and getting the surgery, okay? And that is uh, because acceptable. I've tried everything, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, what do you have to say to me now? That is acceptable. We have had several people who desire to have surgery. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions that I ask them is, if you lost enough weight, would you be okay not having surgery? I think everyone's going to say yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. it's a major surgery. Yeah, yeah, and if they can make those lifestyle modifications, maybe they just didn't have the right support behind them initially, uh, the right education. Yeah, the counseling part. Okay, sometimes, mm -hmm. from what I understand, um, it, it becomes a psychological time mm -hmm. for people too. Okay, um, it's uh, you know people are addicted, like mm -hmm. people are addicted to other things. Okay. They're addicted to different th kinds of food that, that gain the weight, okay? And so psychologically, I mean, I was, there's, this is where the counseling comes in. H how do you handle that? Um, one of the questions that I ask them is, do you eat even when you're not hungry? Mm. And that, if, depending on how they answer that, now they know. Now they know, okay, ask myself, am I eating because I'm hungry or am I eating because I'm bored, because I'm tired? because the clock told me to do so, because I'm stressed, or because I'm just walking through the kitchen. And if we can identify some of the triggers, we can kind of stop it from occurring. Yeah, I would, I, I would think that, you know, sometimes, it'd be, it's, because it's, some people have these different habits, you know, some people get up in, in the middle of the night and they, mm -hmm. they eat, you know, because it's a habit for mm -hmm. doing that, okay? I don't know whether that's good or bad, but, you know, mm -hmm. and then there's a lot of skinny people who do a lot of eating, okay? Um, how, what would be your ratio, okay? Now, I, I know, uh, even though we talk about surgery, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the good thing is, the good news is we have an experienced team, okay. all right? And nothing's going to happen until you're 100% positive that you can do the procedure. Am I correct, doctor? You mean, or I can I, do the procedure yeah. or that, I mean, um, I mean, I've been... Let's assume I'm, I'm, I'm ready now, I'm going to go for the procedure, okay? Um, actually, I'd like to highlight that it's, you can actually think of it as a two-part program. There is a program that helps provide support, education, um, and counseling, and that...
part of the program gets you through to qualify for the surgery. And really, it's, it's a little bit of an insurance-driven thing. So if you, once you get through that part of the program, uh, then you can qualify for the surgery. And you're able to get the surgery if you want anytime, usually within the next couple months or even up to a year. Some, some insurance companies will approve you for that. But getting through the program is stage one, and then deciding to go forward with your surgery is stage two, I think. So I, I highlight that because we want people to finish the program, and then they can decide. And we support them in whatever decision they make. Folks, I'm talking to Dr. Uh, Jonathan Perry, um, uh, Brenda Dare, who is a program coordinator of, uh, uh, of the um, weight loss surgery program, and also Molly Sweeney, who is a program nutritionist, dietitian. You know, folks, whether you should um, you know, get some weight off. First of all, it's, it's for your health, I would assume, uh, which is most importantly. When we come back, there's many advantages and disadvantages. And what about the procedure? How long does it last? Um, remember, there's the 888 number on the screen just to call for information. I know many of you are, are thinking, well, I've tried everything I possibly can. Let me give this a shot. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Sam Sancho, folks. Remember, 24-7, you can watch all of our shows on our app. Download the app and just search SSP TV. For those of you who do not have cable, which you should, but download YouTube and search SSP TV and you can watch all of our shows. Let me share an interesting story with you before I get to my guest here on the health shows that we had. My wife and I were uh, at a local uh, place of business and this lady came up to us and said, Mr. Lasan, I want to thank you for having the health shows. Uh, and I asked her why. She said, it saved my life. One of the shows we did, uh, it was something that she was waiting, to, uh, she was hesitating on and she went and, and they told her that you're lucky you came here uh, because this was a serious situation. And there's many stories like that. I care today with the eyes, etc. So I say to you, it's very important to download the app. There's a lot of great information on here, especially with the Hazleton uh, Lehigh Valley Health Network show here. Uh, we have um, a lot of information for your health. But today we're talking about weight loss surgery program. Before you get into that, you know, for those of you who have been going on diets, you're going crazy, you just can't do it. Uh, this is a great show for you. So I would recommend if you have friends, and remember we played a show on Mountaintop on Saturdays and Sunday evenings, and of course it's on our two systems here, Channel 13 and 513 HD. Um, my guests are Dr. Perry, who is a surgeon, Brenda Durr, who is a program coordinator, and Molly Sweeney, who is a program nutritionist dietitian. Okay, we're talking about the process here, okay? So all right, now uh, Brenda, they call and they, and, and they come in for counseling, okay? And you go through the, all the procedures, okay? When does Molly get involved and when does Dr. Perry get involved? And you also have another doctor, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, well what we do is um, patients attend, uh, dial the one eight 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 number and register for an information event. We have two a month, uh, they're offered at different locations uh, and different times as well uh, to meet anyone's needs, whether they work during the day, work in the evening. So after attending one of those uh, information events, uh, we give the patient appointment that evening or that afternoon, whenever the session may be. And then the patient comes into the surgery office and they meet Dr. Perry for the first time, or second time rather. And Dr. Perry will go in the room, um, he'll discuss uh, if they have any health issues, uh, patient has any questions, like what's the, what's the right surgery for me, and he will guide them through that process. Uh, Molly sees the patients on that same day as well. Uh, she'll go in and uh, I'm not going to steal Molly's thunder, but I know one of the things that she does immediately is she'll start to discuss healthy lifestyle changes that first time that they meet her. Uh, for example, uh, not drinking sugared sodas anymore. I'm just, I'm taking Molly's. Uh, All right, so give me some, so, um, so what do you tell these, uh, so, let's assume there's people out here, like I just said, I'm, I'm like about 10, 12 pounds overweight. And, you know, my wife keeps telling me, come on. So, so I sort of cut down wherever I can. Then I notice a couple pounds. So what are some things, tips that you give people so they don't get into a situation where they, they, they have to consider mm -hmm. bariatric surgery? I encourage meal planning. Planning ahead to know what you're going to eat. Eating often, every few hours, so you don't get to the point of being ravenous, where you lose control of your eating habits. Ensuring adequate protein. So it helps you feel full for a longer period of time. A plethora of vegetables and fiber and more portioned carbohydrate, adequate hydration with water. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know, maybe I had a sip of soda a couple of weeks. I haven't had soda in, in years. I drink water. 
and I found that the you know sodas are, have a lot of sugar in or whatever. A lot of people love soda. I'm just saying what I so I, what I try. I'm just saying what I try to do to cut. So you you will give us that advice, okay? Uh, wh however, what, the, you know that the person is obese and they're over that thirty percent b uh, body. Uh, what is B? Uh, thirty-five uh, BMI. Thirty-five BMI. or higher. Okay, uh, uh, higher. <clears throat> so uh, I would get, like get comfort in. Mm -hmm. You ever have a case where they know that you you know. Um, you, they're going to take your advice, and, and they go, and, and after a, a period of time, mm -hmm. they may do something, but it still didn't work. They're coming back. So I generally try to meet with them every month. Good. And with that month, they get the frequent follow-up. They have the Good. ability to call and email me just to keep them on track and keep them moving forward. Good. I always suggest small changes. I don't want them to assume that it's a diet. I don't want them to change everything at one time. I really want it to be manageable. And with all of the insurance requirements, we really do have a lot of time to get those habits, the habits formed. That's why you guys are the best. Okay. <laughs> now, doctor, getting, all right. So uh, Molly has tried her best. Uh, Brenda's given me information. I need the surgery. Okay. I just can't do it. Okay. So now where do I go from here? So uh, I, I like to highlight that a lot of what we're doing is, is not just to help them lose weight preoperatively, uh, which is not a requirement in our program, but it's a, it's a good thing to do, but it's to help them prepare them for the surgery. So we prepared them the entire time for the surgery. And then uh, when they're, and, and usually they've expressed some preference to me that they want this gastric sleeve is one of the top ones that people are asking for now, or a uh, gastric bypass. Uh, there was a kind of an older thing called the band, uh, but that's kind of lost favor. It's still offered in some What units. do you recommend? Uh, I try not to <coughs> sway people too much, but I'm biased towards the sleeve. Mm -hmm. uh, How long is the procedure? Hour, hour and 15 minutes for that one. Okay. Um, is it a very serious procedure or a routine procedure? I think in some ways, it, it, maybe 10 years ago, it was considered very serious. And I always treat them serious. But uh, at this point, it has become fairly routine. Uh, and uh, you, know, you can get in there and, and get the procedure done, not expose people to too much anesthesia, uh, too much surgical time, and get them back on their feet uh, rather quickly. The, the bypass, uh, I still consider a very serious procedure because it, it involves a lot of rearrangement. And it's usually about twice to three times the amount of time in the operating room. Now, do I have to lose a certain amount of weight before I, I get the procedure? No, okay. uh, we, uh, we try our best to stay to the evidence-based guidelines and uh, you know, every time, every so often people have to interject their own physician preference in it too. And uh, you know, people have seen that 600 pound life with Dr. Now and uh, there's a little bit of preference. Right now, there's no evidence to support that you know, people do better or worse if they have to lose weight preoperatively. Yeah. So, and so how, how long then after the procedure do I begin to uh, enjoy some weight loss and start feeling good about myself? Right away. I mean, it's, wow. um, so everybody's a little different. If you weigh 400 pounds, you're probably going to lose more weight than if you weigh 200 pounds. But you can almost expect about maybe a pound a day wow. uh, for the first month. And uh, it starts to kind of, that continues on for about of a period of a year, year and a half okay. usually. And you're still working with me uh, with nutrition, okay. Do I still have to come to support groups after that? I still have mm -hmm. to come just mm -hmm. to keep myself straight. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, stray a little bit, I guess, and that's not a good thing. That's why right. I, we like to keep them on track and support groups are very helpful because yeah. that's when what we call the veteran patients, patients that have had surgery. And I think that's a good thing because mm -hmm. now I'm structured as Correct. to what I have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to be left alone. If I fall off the wagon a little bit, I'm going to be, Molly's going to put me back in there. Okay. So now there's another doctor you mentioned. Uh, Dr. Brandau, we recently, uh, the Leah Valley Health Network uh, has been sending her up from uh, Cedar Crest. Uh, she's a specialist just in the medical side of the weight loss. And so she actually goes into more options to include uh, some of the medications you can use. Uh, we still, you know, try to discuss the surgery a aspect of it because it has the most durable and most uh, Ben the greatest benefit in weight loss, but you know for some people that's just not the right answer and we want to make sure they have other options yeah. Well, I'll tell you this is a very interesting show because I know there's many people who are struggling with weight loss, etc uh, As far as insurances are concerned I I would think that any insurance company would want me to be healthy because if I'm using a lot of pills and you know Everything to you know, that's a lot more money So I'm saying look he's gonna get himself or she's gonna get himself straightened out I appreciate that. So, um, folks, when I tell you about experience, um, we have a lot of great doctors, a lot of great uh, uh, healthcare 
facilities here and an opportunity such as this Hazelton Weight Loss Surgery Program is, I think, second to none. I want to thank uh, Molly Sweeney for coming on the show and Brenda Durr, thanks for coming on the show. And I want you to know that the doctor did call me. We did coordinate our ties. His tie is a little bit nicer than mine. I'd probably have to get an after this. Wish you the best. Uh, and thanks for coming on and giving us this good information. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having us. Anything in closing? Nothing? Do you want to say it? All right, folks, don't forget. <clears throat> download our app, SSB TV. This show can save your life. Uh, I know many of you are struggling with uh, weight loss. Maybe this is not. Just give them a call. Numbers on the phone are on the screen. Give them a call and see what it's all about. We'll see you next time.